happens is that you get to release a Thanksgiving movie and get to promote a Thanksgiving movie for Thanksgiving uh, with everything that's going on, that it's not a, a month or two later down the line that you're talking about it. You can talk about something that is relevant to something that is actually happening. Absolutely. Hi, nice to be here. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, no, you're absolutely right, because I think there's, there's some people who maybe I think the timing will be great because not a lot of people there's some people who maybe like don't get along with their families and have a little bit of a curmudgeon attitude about thanksgiving so this is perfect for them instead of having you know family dinners where everybody's being you know joyful and loving they can go see this movie <laughs> it's quite the opposite and Karen, I saw the trailer and I was looking through it and uh, I was trying to sort of reminisce about some sort of horror movies to get a sort of feel and a vibe in terms of where it was going. And I got a bit of uh, Jeepers Creepers. I got a bit of uh, Jason X, Jason Voorhees in it. It's more that type horror than a Mike Myers type horror. It's, if you, it's sort of different. It's not the Mike Myers Halloween. This is more slasher or more sort of a gore. It's not really about the uh, the criminal entity character as such it's more about the the backstory and these sort of characters and how they're intertwined dare i say there's a um, you have to sort of follow the plot and follow the, the storyline very sort of entwined you have to be really sort of on your toes to sort of see where it's going absolutely it really is a murder mystery and mm -hmm. Um, what you'll find during the film is that you you think you know who it is. You're trying to figure out who it is. Um, so that's what I find is different about it. You're right. It's not just a slasher film. It's not, you know, you don't know who it is off the off the top. So it's really fun because your mind is going in one direction. You're trying to figure it out. And that's why the kind of um, the jump scares are even better because you're so busy trying to figure out who is it? Who's doing this? Um, and you won't be right. I guarantee it. You will never guess. I suppose Karen as well. Uh, we all know uh, Rick Hoffman from his time in sort of suits as well. And we always saw him in the more sort of comedy sort of uh, roles, the more sort of drama roles. But I think he's found a home really in horror movies uh, in the last uh, one or sort of two ones he has done. And it's a different sort of take in him, but a take on we've seen him as an actor, but certainly sort of suits him. I've been very sort of impressed as him as a horror horror actor it's something that you wouldn't have normally normally you associate one sort of genre with a character or an actor after you've seen him so long portraying that sort of role but uh, he definitely sort of has found a new calling when it comes to horror movies it seems well you know he was in Eli's uh, Hostel yeah. right yeah. so um, he he played an incredible creep uh, <laughs> in that one. Um, in this one, I, he, he you know he plays my husband, and he was such a pleasure. We had all our scenes together, so that was such a joy. I love him. I adore him. Um, so we just had so much fun. Uh, he's very multi talented. I mean, he's hilarious. He's great at improv. He um, he has this face that you the part of you can't trust. Um, but then this adorable face, and so it's yeah, he is perfect for these kind of movies because you kind of do wonder. You know, is it him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, <laughs> right, he so. gets that he he gets that sort of double jeopardy sort of role in terms of horror movies where you think there's a bit of uh maybe there's a schizo sort of uh character going on there in terms of one face looks at the mirror and then the other sort of face looks at the mirror. I will be sure to pass that on. If, in case he doesn't know, it's a bit of a schizo face. Listen, I mean, I've got a face. I've got a villain face. So I get it. I, I love it. I've made a career out of this bitchy face. So <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a fun career because in that way you can, you know, ideally you can play everything, right? So when you can play these characters that are layered, that people try to figure out, it's it's so fun. It's it's so fun. So yes, he does have that face and, and his type of acting. <laughs> Absolutely. And I suppose, Karen, do you find um, a sort of, uh, I wouldn't say romance is the type of word, but you find a sort of uh, a comfort sort of level doing uh, horror movies? Uh, obviously, you've done it uh, in Saw there and the sort of past. Is it, do you feel a sort of uh, at ease where some actors might uh, and some actors might feel, well, that's a sort of, where I have to go out of my comfort zone or something to play these sort of roles. You start to feel at home in terms of this genre. Does it start to come easy to you rather than more dramatic, sort of serious 
full on sort of romantic, intense sort of roles? Does this sort of horror feel almost uh, at your own comfort level? Yeah, I hate to admit it, but yes. Yeah, so I don't know what that says about me, but yes, I do find a comfort in it. Saw Six was my first horror movie that I'd ever done, but I was very used to, like I said, playing villains or playing in thrillers. Um, it's just, it just seemed to be, or sci-fi, you know, um, uh, it seems to be a genre that I, I seem to uh, play in a lot. So definitely comfortable in that way. So yes, I would say definitely being a girl as well. Um, being a girl, we're not used to playing, you know, like really like, <laughs> like crazy parts like that it's usually more demure so I've been really lucky in my career to play action roles and to play different kinds of strong characters and so with this horror genre it was amazing um definitely pushed me to my acting limits in this in this one for sure I don't you saw the trailer you saw where I end up uh so that was definitely a very challenging day I loved it um, almost lost my voice by the end of the day. Um, but it was so great. And I love that because I love action. So there was a lot of action that we shot, um, to, 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 to get to that point where I am in the, <laughs> in the oven. Um, so yeah, definitely strangely comfortable with all of that. It's actually my favorite thing to do. So yeah, I hope there's more to come. And there's no bit of claustrophobia in terms of uh, Karen Cleisha, in terms of, uh, I bet you it was probably a bit more comfortable than the sort of cameras uh, sort of made it look uh, in terms of the squeezed sort of look. Was there, uh, had you a bit more uh, buffer zone for your feet and your arms than what it sort of looked on the camera screen? Listen, it was an actual industrial sized oven. So there was no, Karen, are you comfortable? Karen, do you want a mat to lie on? I had to be like in the, on the grates. I had to be complete. I mean, there was, you know, obviously we shot different angles. So from above, the top would be open from the side. But a lot of the times it was completely closed off. So no, I am not claustrophobic. Um, I was definitely careful to kind of like level my breathing and save my energy because it was insane. Once I got going in there and I was tied up and I was banging and I was black and blue. I got home that night. I was black and blue. My back of my head, I couldn't sleep on the back of my head because I was against the grates, you know, like shaking the whole time. But I wear those as a badge of honor. I'm a bit of a macho. <laughs> so I loved it. So, um, yeah. No, there was no, no way. There was no way a stunt actress was doing that double for you, I take it. Couldn't, couldn't. It was all me. It was all close-ups and everything. So I was happy to do it. I was happy, happy in there. <laughs> yeah. And, and I suppose, um, Karen, in terms of uh, what struck me was the turnaround, the sort of quick uh, turnaround in terms of production, because you shot in um, Massachusetts, but you also mainly shot in Tor Toronto and sort of Canada. But from the time of you started uh, production and filming to the time you finished was was under a month, really. It was like 27, 28 days or something like that. Uh, uh, no, well, we shot, we shot, we did shoot some extra scenes in uh, end of August. So we shot some extra stuff, which was super great, but we did the bulk of it March and April. So yeah. you're right, though. I mean, usually it takes a full year, or the turnaround is a full year. So this was what, you know, six months. And then especially with the extra scenes that we shot, I mean, they just banged it out. I mean, kudos to the editing. Um, like everything yeah so it was very very quick but um it looks great it doesn't look rushed at all <laughs> yeah. and I suppose uh Karen in terms of Canada normally speaking to an awful lot of actors actors and actors in the past from Canada Canada was the home of sci-fi uh what we associated with Canada was serious serious sci-fi productions and uh mainly it seemed to the main genre in terms of maybe and horror and different genres maybe you had to go south of the border you had to maybe make that sort of trip uh, down for different sort of roles but Canada really Toronto uh, Ontario these type of places or even away from Vancouver the hotbed uh, now uh, they're opening up to all different types of genres and different types of roles uh, in terms of production companies it's not traditional sci-fi that's going on there anymore now obviously uh, Canada will always be renowned for sci-fi in terms of that but uh it's it, it's great to see uh, all different types of productions being shot there in your native country now. Not just sci-fi, not just what we know, the Battlestar Galactica, Stargates, the classics uh, sort of stuff now, as we've associated with Canada. But uh, all different genres are now beginning to be filmed uh, in Canada. Must be uh, appealing and quite enticing to stay within your own home country, I imagine. 
Yeah. Yeah. I love it because, you know, I have a home base. I'm actually in Ottawa as my home base, but I travel uh, Montreal, Toronto um, a lot for work, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I shot Flash Gordon in Vancouver. Um, Mutant X was in Toronto. Um, so yeah, it's definitely those two cities were massive in the, in the two thousands. It was all that kind of sci-fi. It was Andromeda, um, all those things. So um, it is very nice, but listen, I mean, I love LA so much. I am just like, <laughs> I'll shoot something in LA. Come on, get me out of this cold. We're about I mean, you know, we're about to enter six months of hell, right? Yeah. <laughs> Coming up. I want to be down in California. So I'm definitely going to be spending more time down there, especially with the strike over now. So I'm so looking forward to it. But yeah, Canada's definitely, I mean, Canada's got everything, um, especially Toronto and Vancouver, right? They are set up for these big productions and big films. So a lot of great stuff has been shot here. I just saw a movie called Priscilla, right? The movie um, Priscilla with the, the El I mean, about Elvis. Um, and half of it was shot in Toronto. So it's just, it's, it's Hollywood North, as they say. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose, Karen, was this your first time working with Patrick Dempsey or have you bumped uh, heads uh, in the past in terms of the business? No, only in my dreams did I ever bump heads with him. <laughs> 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 only when I was sleeping soundly and I woke up from this blissful dream. Uh, so that was such a pleasure to meet him. I was a little bit, I was like, oh God, am I going to be a little starstruck? Because I loved him in Grey's Anatomy, right? So, uh, but he turned out to be amazing, funny, funny. I was not expecting him to be funny. Um, handsome as ever. Uh, and uh, really funny. Yeah, a great guy. So that was a very, very pleasant surprise. Okay. And uh, Karen, in terms of other projects in the pipeline, in terms of uh, other stuff, uh, I imagine now uh, it's back to normality and uh, the next couple of weeks in terms of is mainly focused on production. But, but I imagine the new year will be exciting times for actors and actresses once again. Yes. Oh, we're so happy to be back. We're so proud of SAG for sticking through it. These were very important issues that they fought for and we support 100%. Um, so yeah, I think it, auditions will start to pick up soon and then productions will start after the holidays. Um, so yeah, that we're so excited. We just wanted to get back to work. Um, I was lucky to do a comedy here in Toronto a month ago called Race Walkers. So that was really funny. It was an uh, amazing script. I love comedy. That's another genre that I, I absolutely adore. Um, so that was really fun to shoot um, about, you know, it's about race walking. <laughs> So there's a lot of comedy in that. So it's a great script. So I'm looking forward to that coming out next year. Um, and then we'll see, we'll see what 2024 has in store. I hope to do a lot of horror conventions and, and stuff and meet some fans and, and, and have some fun there. And I saw Karen, the penultimate uh, sort of question. Can you describe uh, your character, Kathleen, in terms of Thanksgiving? Obviously, she plays a, a dame, a, a lady, a sort of such. And uh, can you tell us uh, a bit more about her and uh, what sort of her unique sort of traits and her personality? Yeah. So Kathleen is the stepmom to uh, Jessica, who is the main character, one of the main characters in uh, Thanksgiving, played by Nell Verlet. Uh, and so Rick Hoffman's wife. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't say she's the most likable. <laughs> um, Jessica certainly does not like her as a stepmom. She has kind of infiltrated the family and owned it. And, you know, when being presented with roles like this, it's so easy to just play her like bitchy stepmom and like this kind of thing. So I really wanted to kind of try a different angle in that, yes, you could be, again, with the layers, right? As an actor, you never want to just play one note. So with her, I really just wanted her to actually, I wanted the audience to feel like she genuinely does love uh, her husband. She does love Rick. Maybe she's a bit of a gold digger. Maybe there's that. Maybe she's shallow. Maybe she doesn't like her stepdaughter, but you're never quite sure um, if she really is there for the right reasons. So that's an interesting, um, you know, characteristic that I wanted to uh, inject in her. So um, yeah, so definitely I think there'll be some people who won't be too sad that I'm in the situation that I end up in. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. They might be cheering. I don't know. But uh <laughs> Yeah, so she's that's basically her. So that was really fun to play. And uh, Karen, Eli uh, Ross, people uh, describe him as a, a visionary when they start to meet him. Uh, uh, dare I say, uh, a million ideas a minute start to come to mind uh, in terms of his head is constantly uh, buzzing. And uh, what was your sort of, was this your first time working uh, with Eli or if you touch base with him in the past? And uh, did you sort of uh, see that uh, brain of his in full go? Yeah. Absolutely. I had one of my good friends worked with him, uh, directed a project that that he was part of. 
Um, yes, he's amazing. I absolutely adore him. He's also an actor. So he knew, he knew our side of things. So he was able to communicate really well. Yes. A mile a minute, 100%. My brain also works that way. So it was a perfect match made in heaven, really collaborative, really fun. Um, left us a lot of space to do our thing. A lot of improv. He welcomed that too, which is really fun. So Rick, uh, me and Jalen at one point did a scene where he just let us improv, um, you know, many, many times. So that was fun. No, he's a, a pleasure to work with. I want to work with him again. I would in a heartbeat. Uh, so yeah, he's, I love his sick mind. The things he was putting me through, I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with the both of us? We loved it. So um, he is amazing. He's amazing. I mean, we st we still, we're still in touch um, all the time now. And he's just so generous and so brilliant in what he does. So an absolute gem. Perfect. And Karen Cleish, for the final 30 seconds, we're going to turn it over to you and your character, Kathleen, as well. You might tell our, all our audience here in Ireland why they should go to the cinema screens, their movie screens at long, long last, it seems. Now, uh, they'll get to watch something at a movie. I said they'd be just delighted to go there. Uh, but to go to go to the movie screens on November the 17th to watch uh, the horror slash uh, slasher thriller directed by uh, Eli Rush, uh, Thanksgiving and... And uh, Karen Cleish, what's in store for them? So you will see uh, kills and murders that you have never seen before, all coming from Eli's brain. So stay tuned for some epic stuff that you're going to be like, no, why was that? So it will definitely shock. It's a shocking, shocking thing. Um, the murder mystery part of it is amazing. Uh, the acting is incredible. Um, and the big, you know, there's, it's just, it covers all of the bases. So the people who love their gore will get it. The people who love um, great plot lines will get it. Love mystery. It's for everybody except for under 18. <laughs> Okay, except for under 18. So uh, 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 thankfully, I sort of passed that code. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of uh, nip in uh, to have a look. Uh, but for the moment... You look uh, barely 19. You look barely 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a long, long time ago, Karen. Uh, Karen Cleish, uh, for me, Jim Conlon, to you, Karen, uh, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Thank you. Take care, Karen.